Hi, I'm Jay Garstecki. Join us in the boat today as we feature U.S. Army veteran Victoria Phillips in sunny St. Augustine, Florida. They served for us. They sacrificed for us. Their stories deserve to be told. Every military veteran has a story to tell. Join our host, Jay Garstecki, as we honor the stories of our true American heroes, one soldier at a time. The mission today is Operation Healing Heroes. Brought to you by Great Clips. St. Augustine, Florida lays claim to being the oldest city in America and is steeped in history. U.S. Army veteran Victoria Phillips has a history of her own, a history of unimaginable trauma that started from a very young age. Viewer discretion is advised. My earliest memory was when I was three years old when my dad was tackling my mom to the ground on her stomach in the master bedroom in our two-story house. Huh. And what was that over? Not necessarily sure. I do remember when they were fighting over the phone who was gonna call 911 first. And that was a depiction for me on what a relationship or a marriage looks like. Hmm. A lot of my childhood, I was hit and spanked more than I ever had affection. So physical touch and hugging and whatnot is pretty difficult for me. I would play certain sports that my, I knew my dad would like in order to seek approval, seek him to be proud of me. And as I got older with my teenage years and whatnot, he chose women over us kids. Do you get to see him very often or no? I just don't know how to really have a relationship with him. Why is that? Um, I think the main contributing factor was when he kicked me out of the house when I was 18, right before I was graduating my senior year in high school, probably in April or May of 2010 is when I met my ex. So he was older than you? He was 18 years older than me. I was 18, he was 36 at the time. And I know now that there was a lot of grooming, a lot of manipulation, charm, things like that. And at 18 years old, you probably can't process any of that, right? Of course not. And then being a little bit rebellious, of course, you know. Uh -huh. And being 18, having the mindset of... You know it all. Yeah, exactly. So they told me not to talk to him anymore, which I did. But then a few weeks later, I initiated conversation again and continued on with the relationship because I caught my dad cheating on his fourth wife two separate times without even trying. I had a really hard time listening to my dad when it came to relationships and whatnot. Yeah, I tried to give you advice when... He can't even keep his himself together. So they pulled me aside saying, hey, we know that you're talking to hit my ex. And so he's actually on his way to come pick you up. I remember I was packing two bags as my dad was standing at the bedroom door. And I remember how scared I was and just remember so I had a hard time breathing and my stomach was churning, that's for sure. <laughs> Did he call your parents or talk to your parents somehow and say that he was coming to get you? No, my dad called him oh, really? to come pick me up. No, your dad called him and said, come pick her up. Mm-hmm. Wow. He basically said, come get her. Mm-hmm. And you had no clue? No. And so I was, I was packing my two bags and ready to leave. I hugged my dad, but he didn't hug me back. And I think that really made a statement. Do you think it was weird that your dad called him and said, come pick up my teenage daughter to come live with you at 36 years old? Uh, he was expecting a fist fight with my dad. And he even told his daughter, who was in the back seat of the car, to be prepared for it, but that he was going to be OK. Operation Healing Heroes is brought to you by Great Clips, the Yance Fowler Foundation, and by the Al Lynch Foundation. Operation Healing Heroes is a nonprofit organization dedicated to documenting the lives of our U.S. military veterans. In addition, 
We also provide financial support and treatment for post-traumatic stress. Your donation will help heal our heroes. Do you think it was weird that your dad called him and said, come pick up my teenage daughter to come live with you at 36 years old? Uh, he was expecting a fist fight with my dad. And he even told his daughter, who was in the back seat of the car, to be prepared for it, but that he was going to be OK. I moved in with my ex in uh, December, like two weeks before Christmas of 2010. I was 18 years old. Fast forward to March of 2011. He found out that I was flirting with guys that were closer to my age on Facebook. Although there was nothing else that was involved, he threw into a rage. I don't know how it necessarily started, but he, I could count on my body 42 bruises. But I said, stop, stop, please stop. Those were my exact words. As I was curled up in a ball on, in the master bedroom closet, that's where it ended up. And because we didn't sleep at all that night, the following morning, he told me to get a tattoo property of his first and last name below my bikini line and to not come back to the house until it's done. Oh my gosh. I went to two different tattoo places. The first tattoo place, they said they weren't comfortable in doing it. And so the second tattoo place, I had to lie in order to get it done. I felt like I didn't have anywhere else to go because my dad kicked me out. And so you get this tattoo and Correct. go home? As soon as I get the tattoo and go home, he asked me to show him. And then he takes a picture on his phone. So he basically was trying to make it so you basically thought you had no way out. Correct. I just felt worthless. I felt like I felt dirty. I felt used up. Do you remember thinking to yourself, how am I ever going to get out of this? I did. And people asked me, why did I stay so long? And it's a majority of it is mental. He made me feel so small. Uh, I lacked self-respect or even confidence in that manner. He said you would never make it on your own. Next guy you would be with would pass you around with his friends. You're never gonna find anyone like me. And so you obviously, you hear that stuff long enough, you start believing it, right? I definitely do. Mm -hmm. So I left him and had the courage to leave him. I was staying in an acquaintance home, renting a room out. Long story short, fast forward from December to June of 2015, I got back with my ex. He convinced me to come back. And as soon as I got off that plane, he uh, sexually abused me with a Dasani one liter bottle and hit me a multitude of times where my I was swollen shut for about probably two weeks. And then uh, he made me watch and participate in him having sex with the woman that he was cheating on me with. And later had me shave my head in order to redeem myself. He eventually had me get my head shaved with her there helping, taking off the hair as I was kneeling down on the kitchen floor, just with my head hanging low. And when I go to work, I would have to give the excuse that I shaved my head in support of a friend that did not exist who had pancreatic cancer in order for people not to ask questions and such. Operation Healing Heroes is brought to you by Great Clips, Power Pole, and by St. Croix Rods. I can honestly say I've never caught a stingray before. Uh, me neither. I definitely want to watch out for that back piece right before. Do you get one too? No freaking way. Hey, look at that. 
This is the same one, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I said, he's it's... waving to you. Yeah, I got you. Hi. If you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage, follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're a US military veteran in Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, or beautiful sunny Florida, log on to our website, takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. He had me convinced to get his initials on my breast and a sentence saying I was made for his first and last name down my spine in Italian. This guy's an animal. Basically every tattoo on my body he chose other than probably one. I can honestly tell you I've never heard a story like that and, and it, it rages me to think that there are animals like that out here in this world. I mean, it really does. Things were a blur, but I was in that relationship from age 18 to 25 years old. So I got out of a relationship of eight years, and I got away for the last time, June of 2017. My sister was telling me all the benefits of joining the Army. So after you got in the service, did you finally find some peace? I definitely did. I was very mega I was very excited and determined and dedicated for being a soldier. I had a lot of pride putting on the uniform also. And it was a sense of security of finances, a roof over my head, a career, and another sense of safety knowing that he could not get onto any military bases. Based on her intelligence and high score on the ASVAB, or military aptitude test, Victoria earned herself a chance to work for her battalion's lieutenant colonel. Victoria was thriving until the unthinkable occurred. Military sexual trauma at the hands of her commanding officer while deployed. And here's your safe place, the place that you go to get away from. Correct, you're supposed to trust everybody that you work with and whatnot. And he was very touchy. He grabbed my butt a multitude of times, tried kissing me, and uh, one time he asked me to leave the office and go into a separate room where I was sitting on, to, uh, sitting on a table and he lifted my legs and pressed himself up against me. I was really upset. I was frustrated. So I spoke to my first sergeant in confidence. I didn't tell him a name, but I said, hey, this is what's going on. I just wanted to vent because I'm frustrated and eventually he called me back and he's like, hey, did so-and-so touch you? And I said, first sergeant, I don't want to tell you because we're only a month into this rotation. I said, I don't want to cause any issues. He's like, did so-and-so touch you? I have to report this. And I said, yes. And I begged my first sergeant to not report it. My mindset at the time was I went through so much worse through the relationship from the age of 18 to 25 years old, and I never called the police on him once, let alone for me wanting to give this guy a dishonorable, due to the circumstances, being so minute, in a sense that he didn't even do a fraction as worse of what my ex did to me. So you let it go? So, yeah. Throughout my career, I dealt with a lot of different flirting, but it was harmless. No one touched me, no one did anything such as that, but it's definitely a man's world. And you're not allowed to show emotion, you're not allowed to do anything of the sorts, because not necessarily being robotic, but you have to be a soldier, you have to be tough. VET Service Dogs seeks to teach each veteran and dog how to create an everlasting bond and mutual respect of each other's ability. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you've seen in one of our episodes or nominate a veteran to be featured in a future episode, log on to our website, operationhealingheroes.org. Operation Healing Heroes is brought to you by Recon Boats, Thorn Brothers, and by FVP. I had a love for the military due to the fact that, I, in my eyes, the military saved my life. It gave me a sense of independence and stability, and 
knowing that I can retire after 20 years. I was able to get away from an abusive person that held me down for so many years and made me feel nothing, feel like I was nothing. Um, Definitely a huge accomplishment that I'm very proud of. Victoria sustained a debilitating injury while still in basic training. But with the heart of a lion, she was determined to fight through the pain and stay in the military to ensure a brighter future was ahead. But sadly, her plan to retire from the United States Army after 20 years of service was cut short. I wanted to make sure that I was in the Army as to why I pushed through my injuries, although I didn't know how, the severity of them at the time. My ankle being broken for so long, and the aftermath of the surgery, I had a nerve block on the back of my knee where it caused nerve damage. I was determined to be in the United States Army. So it's because of the injuries that you sustained while in boot camp that ultimately ended your career? Correct. So it took a lot of radical acceptance and my mental health deteriorated immensely where eventually I had suicidal ideations that led me to being inpatient for 28 days. What was your, your last day in service? My last day in service was December 22nd of last year, 2021. My last terminal leave date was the 21st of January, 2022. Oh, so you just got out then? Yeah. Fresh meat as a civilian. <laughs> so what's next? For the first time in my life, since being out of the Army, now being 30 years old, I've always been told what to do by either my parents, my ex, the Army in a sense. And I feel like a lost puppy and I'm still trying to figure everything out. Obviously, I think all of these traumatic experiences in your life as it result, revolves around men and, I mean, where do you think that leads you from now? I mean, obviously you have to take it one day at a time, but. Yeah, ever since I joined the Army and I got to Colorado, actually, I got connected with this husband and wife in the Springs where they said, hey, if we can remove your tattoos for free, we ask that you pay it forward. So because of that, I became a victim advocate through TESSA, T-E-S-S-A, that's in the Springs, and uh, it was a different type of training where I'm able to help others going through with what I went through, in a sense, if not something similar but different. And so I always find a purpose in my life by helping others. I hope that you know that, um, that you've got a friend in, in me and in our organization forever. And uh, if there's ever a time that you need us, and I don't care if it's 20 years from now, I hope that uh, that you'll always keep us on, in mind and contact us if you ever need anything, because that's what we're here for. Yes, sir, and I appreciate you having me here. The ongoing mission of the Operation Healing Heroes Foundation is to honor our American veterans and to provide the help that they deserve. It's our honor to assist veterans like Victoria through the PTS and the trauma. Ah, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Keep your rod tip up. But for now, yeah, keep your rod tip some up. time on the water and a little fishing provides a welcome escape. Am I doing Got it right? Right, fellas? Whoa, nice. what is that? Is that a baby shark? Catfish. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. My first catch. I got the magic touch. I'm no, just kidding. Heck yeah, it's my first catch. I love it. It's my yeah. first ocean catch or saltwater catch at least. Wow. All right, I'll sit back and pretend I have bait and I'll let you get the Good next job. one. Oh, that's so great. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. We want to keep you in the outdoors. We want to keep the healing process going. And if you don't mind, I'm, I'd like to give you a couple things just to commemorate our time together here on the boat for these next couple days. So on behalf of Operation Healing Heroes, we've got this 
St. Croix rod for you. It's got our logo on there and all the branches of service. And thank you for your sacrifice and service to our country. And wow. that's for you. Oh my gosh. In addition thank to you. that, I, I want to make sure that you have a shirt that basically commemorates our time together, Victoria on the front and Victoria on the back. And I hope that you'll no that so wear great. this and remember us. And just please always remember that we do care and that we're always here for you and we always will be here for you. So can I give you a hug? Yeah, of course. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you've seen in one of our episodes or nominate a veteran to be featured in a future episode, log on to our website, operationhealingheroes.org and click on the nominate button.